The Lord be with you. Welcome everybody to this week's Benefice Collective Worship. We have had a run of the great Easter festivals with Easter itself, Ascension and Pentecost. But today we're leaving that behind and we're going to turn our attention to the lives of one of the saints of the church, Saint Helena or Helena. And to tell us more about her, I'm going to hand over to Reverend Joanna. Hello, today I'm going to tell you a bit about a lady called Saint Helena. We celebrate her life at this time of year on the 21st of May. Helena lived a very long time ago. Even though she lived so long ago, nearly 2000 years, we have an idea of what she looked like from this statue. She was born about 250 years after Jesus and she probably grew up in Greece. Maybe some of you have been to Greece on your holidays. When she was about 25 years old, she married a man called Constantius and they had a little boy called Constantine. We know what Helena's husband looked like because there's a statue of him too. And the reason that he had a statue is that he became very important. He became Emperor of Rome. But sadly, as he got more important, he stopped being interested in Helena and Constantine. And when Constantine was a teenager, his parents got a divorce. So Helena became a single mum and she brought Constantine up on her own. But some years later, Constantius died and Constantine became emperor of Rome. Here he is. He loved his mum and he invited her to come and live with him in his palace at Rome. Now, around this time, Helena heard about Jesus and she decided to become a Christian. And then, after another 20 years of living happily in Rome, when she was very old and already a granny, she decided to go travelling. Grannies do that sometimes. Helena had been thinking and she realised that Jesus wasn't made up like in fairy stories. He was, he had been, a real human being. And the places that he lived, like Bethlehem, Galilee and Jerusalem, weren't in the land of make-believe, but were real places. Helena wanted to go and see them before she died. And so she did. It was a long way to go from Rome to the land of Jesus. You can see it on this map. You could either go by boat or the long way round by land, but there were no planes or trains or cars, so it took a very long time. Helena arrived safely and she was so thankful to God that she paid for two churches to be built. One was in the place Jesus was born, Bethlehem. It's called the Church of the Nativity and you can still see it today. The other was in a place where Jesus used to like to go and pray. That one is called the Church of Eleona on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. It got rebuilt a couple of times and you can see that today as well. When Helena had done that, she went home to Rome and she died peacefully with her son Constantine beside her. By now, he too had come to know about Jesus. 
The places Helena visited are today called Israel Palestine, and they have been in the news a lot lately. This is because people are fighting each other about how to share the land between them, and many are getting hurt and even killed. This would have made Helena very unhappy. And so the best way for us to remember her is to pray for peace and safety in that place and for fair shares for all who live there. So I'm going to read something from the Bible, a bit from Psalm 122, which does exactly this. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For the sake of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Thank you, Joanna. I hope you enjoyed hearing the story of St Helena or Helena, and also hearing those words from the Bible, praying for peace in the Holy Land. I wonder what you could do to work for peace in your schools. Perhaps you could think about that together. Now I'm going to say a prayer, and if you would like to and you agree with it, you may say Amen at the end. So let us pray. God of peace and love. Thank you for the life of St Helena. Thank you for her faith in you. We pray for all people who live in the Holy Land now. And we pray that there would be peace in that land. We pray too that we would work for peace in our schools and communities and that we would always be respectful of those who are different from us, knowing that you love all people. In the name of Christ, Amen. Great to be with you again, everybody, and I look forward to seeing you next week.